India's skies are emptying 29 squadrons today, facing China's more than 60 and Pakistan's growing edge. By 2035, both the Russian Su-57 and India's own AMCA promise stealth and supremacy, yet one can land in hangars years earlier while the other is still on the drawing board. In a two-front war, seven years is an eternity. Does national pride outweigh survival, or is the Su-57 the brutal bridge India cannot refuse? India's aerial posture has eroded steadily. The phase-out of aging MiG-21s will dip squadron strength to 29 by late 2025, leaving the IAF outnumbered in any escalation along the line of actual control or western borders. Internal reviews now advocate expanding to 54 to 56 squadrons to deter simultaneous threats from Beijing and Islamabad, a 25 to 35 percent hike over current plans. This isn't hyperbole. Recent skirmishes, like the 2025 Operation Sindor, exposed gaps in stealth and beyond visual range combat, where adversaries like China's J-20 loom large. Enter the fifth-generation imperative. Fourth-generation platforms like the Su-30 MKI and Rafale excel in multi-role operations but falter against low observable threats. The IAF needs stealthy, networked fighters now, not in a decade. Russia's Su-57 emerges as a seductive interim, mature, battle-tested, albeit limited, and geopolitically aligned. Yet with the AMCA's prototype rollout eyed for 2028 and induction by 2032 or 33, why dilute indigenous momentum? The overlap in availability, Su-57 deliveries could start by 2028 if inked soon, forces a hard look at redundancy versus risk. Moscow's overture, timed ahead of President Putin's December 2025 visit, is its most aggressive yet full license production of the Su-57 Echo export variant, unrestricted transfer of technology, and uh, no sanctions clauses. Discussions encompass between 114 and 140 units phased local assembly at Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and integration of Indian weapons like the Astra missile. Russia dangles engine technology, specifically Isdelia 30 variants, avionics, and stealth coatings. These are knowledge gaps that plagued India's past fifth-generation fighter aircraft collaboration, which was abandoned in 2018 over cost and stealth concerns. The Su-57's allure, honestly, lies in immediacy. As a heavy twin-engine beast, weighing around 18.5 tons empty, it boasts supercruise at Mach 1.6, thrust vectoring for dogfight agility, and a 1,500-kilometer combat radius, ideal for deep strikes into the Tibetan plateaus. Payload? Well, up to 10 tons, including hypersonics, like Kinjal analogs. Production is ramping up. Russia plans 76 for itself by 2028 freeing up export lines. For India, this means squadron fillers by 2029, bridging the void until the AMCA scales up. Costs? Estimated at $100 to $120 million per unit with transfer of technology. Cheaper than Rafale's $200 million, but, you know, pricier than Tejas. Geopolitically, it cements the Russia-India defense axis, evading Katza pitfalls that uh, snagged S-400 deals. So, India's bet on self-reliance really came into focus in May 2025, when Defense Minister Rajnath Singh gave the green light to a 15,000 crore rupees package, about $1.8 billion, for AMCA prototypes. This ambitious project, led by DRDO and HAL, is all about a 25-ton medium fighter, with series production aimed for 2032 and induction by 2035. The goal? Somewhere between 120 and 200 units. And you might be wondering about the first flight. Well, that's slated for sometime between 2026 and 2028 with full operational capability expected by 2036. The AMCA, honestly, isn't just a jet. It's an ecosystem. It's powered by indigenous cavalry-derived engines, or maybe the GEF-414 as an interim solution.
and it promises true stealth with a radar cross-section of less than 0.1 square meters. On top of that, it features AI-driven sensor fusion and even sixth-generation touches like swarm drone control. Twin internal bays for six beyond visual range missiles, a 1200 kilometer combat radius, and Mach 2 speeds really position the AMCA as a natural successor to the Rafale, and, you know, it brings it close to parity with the J 20. What's crucial here is that it's tailored specifically for India's needs. High altitude operations, electronic warfare dominance, and seamless integration with Tija swarms. But delays are a real concern. The slippages that haunted the Tejas MK-1A program are echoing here as well, and honestly, engine maturation remains a significant wildcard. Still, expressions of interest from private firms like Tata and L&T signal industrial buy-in, fostering a supply chain for exports. Is the AMCA far ahead in aerial tech? Yes and no. Both are fifth generation, but AMCA's design ethos prioritizes all aspect stealth over the SU-57's frontal focus. The Russian jet serpentine inlets and exposed fans yield a higher radar cross-section, making it vulnerable to advanced radars. AMCA counters with diverterless supersonic inlets and metamaterial coatings, slashing detectability. Electronic warfare suites? AMCA's Udom DAN ESA radar and AI analytics outpace the SU-57's N-036 Bielka, enabling cognitive jamming. So, here's the thing. Size really does matter. The Su-57, with its hefty maximum takeoff weight of 35 tons, can carry up to 14 hardpoints and even packs directed infrared countermeasures lasers. That's a clear advantage over the AMCA, which maxes out at 8 hardpoints. When it comes to speed and range, the Russian jet leads to Mach 2 vs 1.8, and a ferry range of 3,500 kilometers compared to 3,000. But you know, the AMCA's modularity is where things get interesting. It can be upgraded to a 5.5 generation platform with lasers and hypersonics, which kind of future-proofs it. And if we're talking costs, the AMCA's life cycle price tag of 80 to 100 million dollars has a real edge, especially with zero import dependencies. So, what's the verdict? India does need the Su-57, not because it's better than the AMCA, but because it enables the AMCA. The tech edge of the AMCA is real. It's got sleeker stealth, smarter networks, and, most importantly, sovereign control. But let's be honest. Timelines don't lie. With induction set for 2032, that leaves a seven-year gap the Indian Air Force just can't afford. Russia's offer isn't a trap. It's more like a scaffold for indigenous growth, building up skills without those Western strings attached. So, what's the smart play here? Well, a modest tranche of 50 to 70 Su-57E units, with ironclad transfer of technology, strictly for AMCA tech infusion. That move would boost squadrons to more than 35 by 2030, Dieter adversaries, and really launch HAL into the global arena. After that, it's full throttle for the AMCA, aiming for over 200 units by 2040. In the game of aerial chess, India can't just wait for checkmate. It needs to maneuver now. The skies demand both. Russian muscle today, Indian ingenuity tomorrow. Thank you for watching. If you found this video insightful, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.